What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff, and in this video I want to check out this, the Revo Ring Variable ND and Polarizer from h and it's a unique product that basically removes the need to use step up or step down rings. The question is, is it as good as the YouTubers who were sent one for free say it is? Critical review from a videographer's perspective, coming up. It's time for me to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video I will link in the description box below and be sure to show some love for the channel by hitting that notification bell next to your sub button. It just makes a world of difference. It makes me extremely happy and I appreciate it. Thank you. So the Revo ring to me sounds like some sort of dodgy infection. I mean, oh, hang on. Hi doc. Yeah, um, I think I've got a pretty bad case of Revo ring. Yeah. Spread olive oil and chili sauce on it. Okay, all right, thanks. Yeah, yeah, ba, 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 ba. So the Revo Ring started out as a very well-funded, crowd-funded product, and rightly so, because the concept is brilliant. So when it first hit the shops, I ordered one, and in only 172 days, it arrived. I'm just poking a little fun at H&Y. I'm sure they can take it. The reason it was delayed was obviously because of the pandemic, and the, as for the name, I think it's brilliant, it suits it because it almost sort of describes the way that you operate it. The concept of the Revo Ring is to have a variable ND filter that you can quickly switch between lenses that have different filter thread sizes without the need of using step up or step down rings. Let me show you how it works. To attach the Revo Ring to your lens, you just grab the rear side of the Revo Ring, give it a twist and then place it over the front of your lens. Let go and then screw it on as if you would with a normal filter. Looking at the front, we have two other rings. The rear one is the polarizer and the front one is the ND. To remove it, just unscrew it as you would with any filter. The mechanism that lets you attach this to different filter thread size lenses is really cool. It has kind of aperture blades and it's spring loaded so it snaps back to that widest position. Next, let me go over the features. The Revo Ring has both a polarizing filter and a variable ND from ND3 to ND1000, which is one and a half stops up to 10 stops. One really nice thing about the ND Ring is that it has a very short throw, so you can get from minimum to maximum in only about 90 degrees. One other huge thing for me is it has hard stops, which is really handy because most ND filters just rotate infinitely and this is just easier. The Revo Ring also has a magnetic front. Why, I hear you ask? Well, H&Y also sell a magnetized lens cap, which is super handy, plus a stick-on sort of magnetized three-stop ND filter, additional three-stop, if you want to go outside and film in midday at f1.2. It's a super cool idea. I'll definitely be ordering one of those lens caps, but the really exciting thing that I've heard on the grapevine is that H&Y have a lens hood that just will snap on magnetically in the works. And I just think that's such a cool idea and I really want that. Good idea, H&Y. The Revo Ring also comes in a variety of different filter thread ranges. I went for 67 to 82, and you can also get them without the ND and polarizer elements if you just want to attach your own filters. It also comes with a pretty nice case, which won't protect it from impact, but should protect the glass elements from being scratched. When I first took the Revo Ring out of its case, my first impression was that it feels chunky, solidly built, but surprisingly light, and that's because the housing is made entirely from high-grade aluminium. One thing I noticed is that the polarizer ring is super smooth, but every other moving part on here sounds kind of scratchy. Let me show you. This is the ND, and then this is the polarizer, and this is the kind of aperture blade bits where you, you know, so you can attach it to your lens. Scratchy. Anyway, now let me show you what the footage looks like using this.
So one of the things I wanted to check out is the effect that the polarizer ring has on your image. And as I'm turning it now, you can see it has quite a profound effect, particularly when you look at the detail in the sky and also the colors you get from the foreground. Personally, I'd like to stop it around here. It just seems a nice balance of richer colors all around, plus the sky looks great and there's no sign of any kind of weird vignetting. Of course, there's no real tip I can give you for this. It's just about nailing it in camera, but really the best thing you can do is to have a good external monitor, which has waveforms and the ability to apply lookup tables. As I mentioned, the ND range is one and a half stops all the way up to 10 stops. This footage was shot at f1.4 and you can see when I turn the ND to minimum, it looks like this. And then to max, it looks like this. It's pretty damn impressive. So with the ND on max and using a fairly wide lens, getting a fascinating shot of this wall, you can see that there is some some degree of X pattern. Now, I will say this is stacking the deck against the Revo ring somewhat. Like I said, this is using a wide angle lens and when I went out shooting, I was shooting at almost exclusively f1.4 and I didn't go anywhere near that maximum level of ND. I found the best bet is to position the X sort of at the top and bottom. I found that was the position in which it was the least pronounced presumably because the darkest spots fall beyond the area of the sensor. So now let's look at the pros and cons of the Revo ring. Firstly, it's so convenient. I mean, I love the fact that I can just never use step down rings again. It is really nice and solidly built. Remember, it's made from high grade aluminium and there's no plastic in sight. I absolutely love the quality of the ND and polarizer glass used. I love the colors I've had from the footage using the Revo ring. It just kind of gives me that confidence that I'm not gonna have weird color shifting. A really big deal for me is that the ND ring has hard stops. I just find it so convenient. I love it. And then there's that magnetized front. It's such a good idea and the prospect of having a snap-on hood is so appealing to me. And then I would say this product is priced correctly. It's not stunning value or anything but I don't feel ripped off. And onto the cons and the obvious one for me is that all of the controls feel quite scratchy and I don't know if I've got a bad copy, I don't think that's the case. So yeah, I've just got to lump it. Also the ring you use to attach it to lenses is a little bit fiddly, it's a bit stiff I found. I do wonder whether they could have got it smoother and less scratchy sounding. You do get some of that X pattern, but only when the ND is at its maximum. If you're just a few degrees away from maximum, I don't think you'll notice it. As you saw from the test footage, most of that was shot at f1.4 in broad daylight and I didn't go to maximum once. I didn't mention this before, but that magnetic cap that you can get for the front is quite expensive for what it is and I just would have loved to have seen it included with the Revo ring. Finally, not really a big deal, but the case that comes with it is kind of meh. It's okay, it's not that protective, could be better. Finally, it's my opinion, and I'll start with the question of value. And whilst the Revo ring isn't inexpensive, I would say it's cheaper than a load of other ND filters that don't have the amazing functionality of the Revo ring. So I think it's a unique product that's absolutely perfectly priced, but when you factor in the possibility of having a magnetically attachable lens hood, it just becomes even more appealing. I can live with these scratchy feeling controls because overall it feels like it's not gonna break. It feels just like a well-built, sturdy unit. And you do get some of that X pattern when you're using the higher amounts of ND, but really it's super common with almost all ND filters. I would say if you need to use those really high amounts of ND, buy the separate snap-on filter that gives you an extra three stops. And then of course you can lower some of that ND. A big benefit of the Revo ring is it takes away the decision-making element of whether or not to buy a lens based on its filter thread. All of my filters are 77 millimeter. So recently I've been eyeing up the Sigma 135 millimeter f1.8 beast of a lens but it has an 82 millimeter filter thread. So the thought of having to buy another even bigger ND filter and then using step down rings for my other lenses or just taking more than one filter out with me has really stopped me pulling the trigger on that lens, but no longer. And secondly, you're no longer left with the decision of which lenses and then corresponding step down rings you'd need to take with you to be able to go and shoot. If all of your lenses have filter thread sizes within the Revo rings range, no worries. Pick any lens and go. I'm so happy to be done with step rings. I can't stand how fiddly they are when they get stuck together, they get stuck on your filter and you just can't unscrew them. 
that stupid noise they make when they clatter around in your camera bag. I just want to glue them onto a frisbee and fling them over a rainbow. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about the Revo Ring if you want to in the comment section below. I'm down there as much as I can be. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Just hang it